Hey guys, so this is gonna be a little bit different on this channel. For those of you guys that are subscribed to my separate channel, Nikki Dimar, this is actually very familiar for you guys. But for those of you guys that aren't subscribed, I have a series on my channel called The Truth About, where I sit down with YouTubers and we talk about things that they're dealing with off camera currently that you guys don't really necessarily know about. So this all started with me coming about my own eating disorder. I made a video where I confronted my best friend about my eating disorder, and I realized I wanted to continue this path of storytelling, spreading awareness, and bringing that wall down so that way you guys as subscribers Subscribers see that us youtubers are people like you and we go through very similar things that you guys go through I've gone to a few youtubers houses so far I met with Sierra Furtado and we talked about her appearance I met with Jesse Page and we talked about coming out as bisexual and a lot of you guys wanted me to sit down and talk to my own sister Gabby about what she's dealt with since she's made a huge physical transformation from when we started YouTube up until now so for those of you guys that have dealt with an appearance change we all know that it starts with the mental and it starts with how you feel usually the external changes when you're not feeling so good on the inside. I'm going to sit down with Gabby and figure out what led to her transformation, why she felt the need to change, and where she is right now. Gabby's actually on her way over. As you guys know, we are now bi-coastal. I'm living in Los Angeles, and Gabby's living back home in our hometown in Pennsylvania, and she's visiting for the week, so I invited her over to be a part of the series. She's actually never been in my new apartment, so this is her first time not only seeing my new place, but being in the series. And instead of having the series be on my channel, I'm gonna put an episode on the Nikki and Gabby channel so that way our DMR dolls can get a really big inside scoop on Gabby's transformation. All right, so let's bring the wall down, let's bring awareness, and let's keep the conversation going. Let's go. <laughs> this is my new place. It's so pretty. Okie doke. Gabby, have you seen my other episodes? Yeah, where do I sit? <laughs> Here, there's so many. I'm a pillow hoarder. You know, like, what we're doing. Yes. Are you nervous? Not really. I feel like you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is like really hard because we're never serious. I know, like I feel like we're gonna like laugh. The series is like very genuine and it's like bringing the wall down. So like, I mean, I know you don't have an issue being open. Not at all. You're and like an open Sometimes I book. say things that people are like, why did she just say that? But like, I don't care. Like I'm just real. So, okay, you look totally different. And as a sister, I remember when- And you twin. And twin, mm -hmm. yeah. when. <laughs> It's even weirder for me because when we were little, we I couldn't even tell which was you or which was me. Like, it was impossible to tell us apart. Mm -hmm. And then now, we're known as the opposite twins. I know. We are confirmed identical. So. I know. I feel like I have your old face. Is it, like, weird looking at me sometimes? You don't have my old face anymore, but I'd say, like, pre-breakup, Nikki had my old face. Was it, like, weird? Yeah, it was really weird because I started changing my face and modifications, like, way before you did. Like, as soon as I turned 18, you know where I was. I was at the medical spa getting my lip injections because I hated my, my small lips so much. Would you agree that, like, that's when it started was when you got your lip fillers, then you wanted to change this, and then it led you to want to change this? No, I don't. I was so content with my lips. Anything else that I changed after the lips was because it's something I also hated my whole life. I never, I never just like saw something on my face and was like, you know, maybe I could fix this too. Or maybe I could fix this too. Because I felt that way, obviously, about my boobs or my butt or things that like you could literally just go get done tomorrow. And I just, those are things, even though I wish I could get a boob job or a butt job or whatever. Lipo. Uh, or lipo. It, one time I went for a consultation for that and they told me I had to gain 20 pounds and I left. So I did explore those things, but at the end of the day, those never fell through because they weren't lifelong things that I wanted. My nose and my lips were things I hated so much and my teeth. And those are the three things that I got done that really made a difference in my face. And I'm so happy about it. So when we first started YouTube, people could not tell us apart. I remember we literally had to make separate videos so that way people could get to know you. Hi, I'm Gabby, that's where it would start. Yeah. And then I'd be like, hi, I'm Nikki, and do my favorites videos, so that way people could like know us individually since we look mm -hmm. so much alike. I feel like when we looked alike, I associate us being the closest we've ever been. Like, I just feel like in high school, you were my best friend, 
and then you started dating your ex and I think that's when, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's when you started changing your face and we started distancing. It was when you first got your first serious relationship. Well, it was actually three years into that because I was not eight. I was 15 when I started dating him, so as soon as I turned 18, I, the changes started happening. I felt like this is such a bad example because obviously I'm a girl and excuse me if this sounds like up, but I felt like when someone is like, a boy and they want to transition so bad but you're not old enough to get it done or like you don't have the money to do it and then you finally have the money and you're finally old enough you're like yes and you go crazy I was finally 18 I'm like yes I finally get to change the face that I hate so much but why did you hate your face so much we grew up with such a beautiful mom who had a very feminine face beautiful big lips like beautiful tan beautiful teeth mom was a beauty queen she was miss new jersey we grew up runner up but still yeah we grew up like seeing that and seeing her pictures and i always wanted to look like mom but we grew up looking like dad, dad. we had the thin lips the little teeth pale i got the dip down fat nose i got pale droopy pale, eyes droopy eyes yeah, droopy bags eyes. under my eyes bags under our not eyes. saying dad's unattractive those are all very attractive features For on a male, male. exactly and i grew yeah. up with a male face and i just like a guy wanting to look like a girl. I wanted to look like a girl. Like, so bad. And I wanted to feel happy about my face. Like, I would look in the mirror. I remember being at Sephora for the first time, and I looked at all this lipstick and lip gloss, and I'm like, I, I can't buy this. I have nothing to put it on. If you look at my old makeup tutorials, like back in 2013, I would never do my lips. And if anything, I would slap on some lip gloss and go... But I'm not saying little lips are bad by any means. Like, I just personally felt like someone who loves makeup so much, like it was holding me back. Like I always wanted like a makeup face. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like some people aren't into makeup and I feel like they, they don't see the point in fillers. But when you're into makeup and you want the face for makeup, I totally know what you mean. There's like two different types of girls. Mm -hmm. And like when I wasn't into makeup, I didn't understand why you were filling your lips. I was like, what is Gabby's yeah. problem? But then I got into makeup and I realized like, you wanna wear red lips. And yeah. if you wear a red lip, you don't want to wear a bunch of eye makeup. The focus has to be the lips. And if you put red lipstick on like paper thin lips like we had, mm -hmm. it almost it accentuates your thin lips. And I remember I used to get made fun of at school for having black eyes. I used to wear so much eye makeup to go to high school. And the reason I did that was because I had no lips. So I would try to compensate it by doing a really cool eye. So back in the day, I used to do so many crazy eye looks because I just... That's the only feature I could explore like my makeup passion on. So basically, before you started getting filler, you voiced to me and to mom and to dad at the beach, I remember. You voiced that you wanted to get fillers. And this was like summer 2014. Mm -hmm. And we all thought you were crazy. Mom cried. They were like, if you get fillers, you're kicked out of the house. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like you even made a whole video I saw on your laptop. I went on your laptop when we were at the beach and you had already pre-made the video telling everyone, I'm getting lip fillers. But then the irony is you never posted that video, but you did get the lip fillers and you like stopped. Every time you would get lip fillers, you wouldn't come home. You would just stay at college. And that's what led me to Kenny. That's how me and Kenny became friends. Because when you'd get when you'd be swollen, you didn't want to come home. I needed to make a friend at school that I could stay over in their room for when I get would get fillers. Because if mom and dad saw my lips were swollen, they'd kick me out. So basically, I feel like that's when you were trying to be honest with the family and me. And then, I feel like moving forward with all your other procedures, you've completely left me and mom and dad like out of the loop. It's like it's almost awkward to bring up, not to you. I tell you everything now, but like there was a good period of time where you didn't tell me anything. I was like ashamed. I felt like like them and maybe you sometimes because you were scared to get it done, but I knew you wanted to get stuff done. You guys almost like made me feel ashamed for, I could see why, but for changing who I was born as. Yeah, mom and dad were really worried. I remember you trying to be honest about it and you got no support. If anything, you got threatened. Then from that point on, you just, that I feel like that's where the distancing all happened. You with the family because you would get like your lips done and then you'd go stay at our college for like, a week while your lips were going down mm -hmm. and mom and dad would think like you'd come home pack a bag leave go home pack a bag leave and that sounds crazy how often i was getting lip filler but when you go from like a lip as thin as like when you turn your nail horizontal yeah. to this you have it's high maintenance you think it's done a lot so the first time you got lip filler behind all of our backs like were you guilt like how did you feel 
I had my ex-boyfriend in the room and Danielle Pfeiffer, our best friend from seventh grade, because it was so scary for me. I actually asked mom if she could come with me and she said no and screamed at me saying, you shouldn't touch your face, you're beautiful the way you are. But they were really mean about it. I just feel like fear brings out like the worst in people. And I think mom and dad were genuinely scared. Like our, our in their eyes, we're their daughters. We're beautiful, like we're perfect. And we look like them. So to, to see us like altering our faces, that is always, you know, you see like Lindsay yeah. Lohan and like other celebrities, like it's kind of a deep dark hole. Mom and dad like to jump at the fact that, oh, it's the fame that made her change her face. It's the fame, it's the followers. This isn't a good feel for her. But the thing is, is I would have done these changes with followers or without. I started the changes way before we turned into this. I feel like you do have that argument because we only have like what, 200? I did fillers way before Kylie did lip fillers. We had 200,000 subscribers or like three, mm -hmm. not like, it was nothing like where it is now, like before any of this. So the first time you got your lips done, did it hurt at all? Did you feel like any kind of regret, like hiding things? It didn't hurt at all, but the numbing is what scared me. And the results the first time weren't that great because I didn't do my research and I didn't go to the best place. But also I forgot the fact that I was going from like this thin to wanting to achieve this and it wasn't gonna happen overnight. I went through a weird marionette phase that anyone with thin lips that tries to get fillers goes through before they achieve the plump. So yeah, I didn't really like the results at first, but I knew I was aiming towards a goal and I obviously achieved it, so I don't regret it. So the first thing you changed was your lips. I wanna say the next thing that started after that was your tan, your skin. Mm -hmm. So I know that this is controversial, and like you've approached this on your vlog channel, um, you get accused of blackface a lot. Mm -hmm. And our mom is actually like Cuban. She's pretty tan. And our dad's very fair Italian. So in the summer, we do get super dark without, like we don't need to use sunscreen. Like we we've just- We've never burned. We've never burned. So I guess you do get spray tans, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I. I don't know if I should be saying this on this channel because this is also very controversial. I do tanning bits. His spray tan washes off and I naturally have a very like nice tan. I actually prefer my natural tan over spray tan. Yeah, because our natural tan is an actual like Hispanic tan. It's very olive and it's yeah. pretty. It's not like orange. I You can tell when I get spray tans and you can tell when it's a natural tan. Right now it's natural. You can tell I just don't see the sun. <laughs> Why did you feel the need to just start getting super tan? I wanted my skin to look like mom's. That makes sense. And I also feel like when I have a tan, I just feel better about myself. Me too. Me too. And as you know, like at home, it's like really cold in the winter and you ba basically get nine months of winter. What keeps me sane and happy there, I think, is the tanning beds. I get my nice vitamin D all the time. I really wonder if I'd be happier in Pennsylvania if I actually started tanning like you did. Because I was It really miserable. helps with my moods. Like, as you know, like I've... I've been up and down with moods like my whole life and like I think what helped me stabilize was not only getting on the right thyroid medication but like the tanning beds. So first it was lips, then it was tan, then it was your teeth. Yeah, it was my teeth. So if you guys can't tell, I'm gonna like break the third wall here. These are what our natural teeth looked like. What's really weird is like when we were younger, how we knew we were kind of identical is our teeth grew in the exact same, same way. way. But the only thing is, is Gabby had a little bit more of a space because she didn't wear her retainer and I did. I had a gap in my teeth. This is what Gabby's old teeth used to look like and this is what my teeth look like now. So these are porcelain veneers, my dad did them. <laughs> Our parents are dentists. Yeah. Porcelain veneers pretty much entail they shape down your real teeth and stick on porcelain fake teeth <laughs> over your teeth. What made you want to like get porcelain teeth? My small teeth made my big lips look botched and they weren't. They just, in proportion to my small teeth, made my lips look crazy. It wasn't because I didn't like my small teeth. I, I, I actually prefer my small teeth over these, but it was a whole proportion thing. So you do have to admit though that that theory that like when you start modifying yeah. and changing your face, it leads to another thing, which leads to another thing. Which, so like. I was not happy with like from my eyes and below. Like I hated my nose, I hated my lips, and I hated my teeth. My whole life. I, I was going to change them regardless. It's, I don't know what order, but those were the three I was definitely going to change. I actually, when I was in high school, when I, when I would not pay attention in class and doodle, I made a list of things and modifications I wanted to change that I was going to start saving up for. Yeah. See, and I didn't even think of those things until like last year. And these are things I've wanted since I was like 15. The next thing you changed was your nose. That was, the, that was, I think, the best over the lips and the teeth. Really? Whether people can see a difference or not, like, it made me so much happier.
year. I did a blog about it. I mentioned why I did it, but moral of the story, it really crushed my self-esteem. Like I would never go anywhere without makeup on because of my nose. I wanted to do my eyes to distract from my nose. How would you describe your previous shape of your nose? It was bulbous. That's what every plastic surgeon said. I went to so many plastic surgeons. I went to like seven consultations, seven doctors. I hated my nose so much. I actually might still have to get a septum plasty, but I don't want to change the shape. I have a severely deviated septum. Do you ever miss your old face? 2015 face? Yeah. 2013 face? No. The difference is I only had my lips done. I miss my old teeth. And sometimes I do miss my old nose, but I was not happy with it, if that even makes sense. So when you were in high school and even middle school, everyone said your celebrity doppelganger was Vanessa Hudgens because it really was. Yeah. <laughs> And now people say your doppelganger is Ariana Grande, and people think that you've made all these modifications to turn into Ariana Grande. You just happen, I feel like you happened to make the modifications and you look like mm -hmm. Ariana Grande. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's honestly what happened. My old teeth look just like hers, so if that were the case, I would've kept my old teeth. My old nose was like more like hers, if that were the case. Like mine. Yeah, if that were the case, I would've kept my old nose. But I wanna be Gabby. I changed my nose because Gabby wants to be happy. I changed my teeth Gabby wants to be happy. Not because I want to look like Ariana. That sounds like a pretty mis miserable life, if you ask me. Yeah, because, I mean, I could see why it seems that way, but because I know you, it wasn't that way. I know that you were, you have a very similar style to Ariana Grande, so you happening to look like her while having that style made it look like you were copying. Yeah. But now it's like... It's actually gotten really bad as of yesterday because I just released that I dyed my hair back to dark brown. But no one knows the truth to that story. I went swimming in a shocked pool and my blonde hair turned green. So there was no choice. I just feel like you can't win. Things are always gonna look another way. And that's the point of the series. Nobody knows what's going on behind the camera. Social media and videos do not tell a big enough story for people to judge people. It's like you don't know what's going on. And you were struggling with how you saw yourself and you finally had the money to make the modifications to make yourself happy, which you did, but now people think you're copying Ariana Grande. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you would have either stayed looking how you were and not been happy, or made these modifications and be hated on for trying to copy somebody. I think that's why I'm excited to make this video because I feel like I understand why people could see that. Like, like, I, like I said in Sierra's video, like I understand why people thought she was bitchy and pretentious because she had a poor job of being vulnerable and didn't know how to be. Mm -hmm. So it came off wrong. It's almost like an army against one. Like it's been hard for you just to explain yourself against all these people that are hating on you. And I don't, I used to feed into it and respond. I don't respond anymore because I don't blame them. Because if I was at home on Instagram looking at this girl on YouTube, I'd be like, like I would hate on her too. Well, it's weird because I can't fangirl over Ariana Grande. I've come to this conclusion. I, I don't look at her like a celebrity because I really feel like I'm watching my sister. I, if I ever saw her in concert, like I wouldn't freak out. It looks like you. Like I'm like, I don't. Does that make sense? And I'm a huge fan of her, so a lot of people misinterpret that. I used to get that I like Ariana Grande. The first YouTube video I ever did, which proves that I've always been a fan, was an Ariana Grande makeup tutorial before I did anything. Aww. Yeah. It was her put your hearts up. But then, look do you see that angle where like mm -hmm. it looks like you're a fan? I'm girl. obviously very influenced. My makeup is so influenced by her because she looks like you. So you see what works, so it'll yes. work on you. Exactly. And. The extensions and all that stuff, like, yes, I am so inspired. Like, her hair is beautiful. Like, she's a very beautiful girl. I don't want to be her. I'm very happy as me. I love my life. I love what I do. But at the end of the day, when you want to see, like, oh, what should I wear for this event? Or how should I do my hair or makeup? You obviously find someone that emulates how you look and has your style that's, to get inspiration. That's what I've done. Um, I used to get the Halsey hate. And <laughs> the Halsey. The Halsey. But, like, when I did, I wasn't copying Halsey at all. It's just... She's the only other person I can think of that had blue hair. And your style. Yeah, and my style. So like the colors that matched and complemented the blue hair, I'd be like, okay, that means I could wear those colors because those colors actually look good with blue hair. So it's like people get inspiration and it doesn't always mean copying. I let people tell me I copy Ariana because at the end of the day, that's what it looks like. I'm looking worse if I defend that I'm not, you know? They're gonna say what they're gonna say and no matter what, I'm gonna keep getting influenced clothing, style, hair, makeup wise. like So just responding to them, what's that gonna do? It's just gonna draw more attention to something that is sort of true. You also lost a lot of weight from when we started. Why did you feel like the need to diet? Because as your sister, 
I saw a complete change in how you ate. And I know that you were hardcore dieting at one point where you were very underweight. It almost like scared our mom and dad and me because not only was your face changing, but your body looked like a completely different body. Okay, well, when I first started my modifications, I was losing weight because my ex was obsessed with Ariana's body. So, yes. That's why, and all the girls he cheated on me with happened to be like this. And I'm Latina, I'm Cuban, like, I'm not naturally gonna look like that. He cheated on me all the time. He had a girlfriend of an entire year, our third year. And you didn't know? And I didn't know, I found out a week before our first meetup. The types of girls he'd cheat on you with didn't have your body? No, they were all so slender. So skinny. Athletes? Cross country runners, athletes. His girlfriend of a year, our third year, the worst one, that was the worst cheating case. Um, she was extremely underweight. That's where, that's where all the eating problems started. So you felt like you had to look like her because he cheated on you with her? Mm -hmm. Guys and breakups, like I feel like heartbreak is so underrated because it's like, oh, it's just a breakup, you'll get through it. But it's like, no, when you put all your time and effort into a person and you see a future and you do everything for them and then all of a sudden they do the biggest form of betrayal, cheating, it messes with you and I, can't believe you stayed after finding out because you stayed together with him for five years and you found this out the third year in. The last two years of your relationship was when you started really looking different. So a part of me as a sister was wondering if you felt like you had to change for him. Like everything. No, I was doing it for me. He actually hated the changes and I just kept pursuing me. But the weight was because of him? Yeah. So where are you now, like mentally and like, do you have any modifications coming up that you want to no, change? I'm done. I'm so happy right now. I think it shows. What message would you want to put out there that like your younger self wished somebody would have said in a YouTube video or even to the girls that like don't support cosmetic surgery? Well, at the end of the day, I don't think it's right to support something so expensive and to risk your life to change something that doesn't need to be changed. I don't support that. I, all my procedures, I've never gone under the knife ever. I never will. I'll never, like risk your life I'll never for risk a change. my life for a change. For a physical change. No, but if you feel like you're in prison looking at yourself in the mirror and if you truly hate something like your nose, if it truly controls you like your entire day, and if all you think about all the time is your nose or the angle people are looking at you, or like, then it's time to consider maybe you should start saving up so you could be happier. But the argument some people will have against what you're saying, which I understand what you're saying, but some people will say happiness is internal. If you keep trying to look for it externally, you're never going to fully be happy. What would you say to those people? Because I have seen a, a, an attitude change in you since you got these done. People that are saying that weren't born with something that makes their, their outlook on life so negatively. Like, I know it sounds so dramatic, but it made me so unhappy. And you would say that you haven't looked back since you've changed? No. I'm so happy. Anyone that's gotten their nose done or something that, like a statement feature on their face that they hated, the moment they corrected it, happiness. So you're basically saying as long as it enhances and makes you confident and as happy. As long as it makes you happy here. But have you also achieved the type of happiness? Are you happy with your life right now? I don't really like put as much time and effort into my looks as I once did. For example, I go run errands without makeup on now. I don't care. And I could never do that with my old face. I just couldn't, as blunt and as awful as it sounds. Like, Everyone's happiness is different. This is what made me happy. This is what helped me. I just don't want our viewers to judge me on what I've done to my face because they never knew the backstory and that's why this is hard for me to talk about on this channel. We have a lot of young and impressionable viewers and I don't want them to think that they need to go get surgery and change their face to be happy. That's what worked for me. I don't want them to judge me for what I've done to myself to be happy and I don't want them to judge anyone else who's overcome changes like me to be happy. Everyone's happiness is so different. That honestly makes so much sense. Everyone is different and everyone has different things that make them happy, different passions. You love makeup. Some people don't care about makeup. We love singing, you know, not everybody likes singing. I do want everyone that's watching this to know changing your face isn't going to make you happy. This isn't, that's not the point of this video. Mm -hmm. This is just a deep dive into Gabby's psyche, basically. Like, <laughs> like basically. Psychologist Nikki. I, I just feel like this is like a background mm -hmm. into like why you look the way you do now, mm -hmm. just to give some people insight and let them in. I just feel like it's been a mystery to so many people. Like, yeah. Why did Gabby change? It's more to it than just Instagram pictures. Yeah, the whole point is just letting people know why and where you are now.
And this doesn't pertain to your lives or to what you guys have to do. Happiness is obviously the most important thing in life. I think we all come to a point where we realize that's seriously all that matters. If you're not happy, what's the point? So I want you guys to take away from this. If you have to make decisions to be happy, make those. Whether it means leaving toxic people, modifying your face, being with a guy or girl and people don't accept it. It's coming out of closet. It's, it's your life and it's like nobody else's. I think everybody's gonna always have judgments of people. Unfortunately, it's the world we live in. But at the end of the day, it's your life and you just gotta do you. And I've honestly never seen Gabby this comfortable in her skin. And I'm really happy that you were able to actually explain it all for I everybody know. that's been asking. I feel, I feel so pretentious. like. Saying I'm so happy after doing all this to my face like there's no other way to put it but unless you've been as insecure as I was and so unhappy and now finally so happy you just like won't get it because there has been those cases where people are just so unhappy and then they get their face modified and then they're even more unhappy and then they keep changing their face like we've seen it with young kid stars that go crazy but I feel like there's everyone has a different story and that's why I love this series because I know everyone's different. I'm like I feel like I've been having anxiety talking about this like I'm like like doing like clenching my fist and like I've been like putting my hand on my neck those are like all my anxious signs I'm just like so nervous for people to watch this because I'm scared of the interpretation that's gonna come out of this but I hope people understand it's just like happiness like that's it I mean I think you're just being genuine and giving your fancy babies almost like you're filling in the blanks that they've probably deep down wondered why has our idol changed what has she changed and do we have to change like you know it's like i'm glad you're putting it out there that not everybody has to change to be happy because everyone's happiness is different mm -hmm. thanks for being on my series and thanks for so funny. thanks for letting me put this on the main channel you know i'm scared but they deserve an answer and if you guys want to see more of the series you guys should Go follow me on my channel, Nikki Dimar. Um, I'm gonna be the new Doctor Phil of YouTube. Guys. Oh my God! Bye. Oh wait, I don't know how to close these. How we always you? end ready, awkward hug. Ready? We end with a hug, and we don't know where to look to say bye. Bye. I've never <laughs> seen you two hug in my life. What does that say? <laughs> really? <laughs>